Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about how Rocket Labs valuation does not make any sense. I just got this news set, uh, tweeted to me by a subscriber. So thank you very much. You know who you are. And then I found and looked for it in the news and I thought that this is nuts. So SpaceX eyes a 175 billion valuation in the latest share sale. So this got me thinking, okay, so because obviously Rocket Lab and SpaceX is not so comparable because uh, Rocket Lab is doing their phase one and two, which is, you know, launching the rockets and building the space systems. And then they want to have space infrastructure later when they're ready. And they're clearly not ready. Whereas SpaceX has bigger rockets. The Falcon 9 is like the neutron e equivalent of Rocket Lab. Uh, the Super Heavy is not, uh, sorry, the Starship is not even on the map for Rocket Lab and they already have their own space infrastructure, right? So they are a lot more ahead of Rocket Lab, but I decided to still look at if Rocket Lab would have similar valuation like SpaceX and then I wanted to see what are the other private rocket launch companies value that and, and why and I'm going to share this with you and... Let's see the conclusion that we come to. But spoiler alert, the valuation of Rocket Lab does not make any sense. I can tell you this. So please make sure you hit the like button and you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And let's go get this video started. So SpaceX eyes a 175 billion valuation in latest share offer. And guys, that is nuts. So the biggest IPO uh, on earth has been Alibaba at something like 139 billion uh, that was their IPO valuation, right? So SpaceX is not even talking about IPOing. This is just their private um, valuation. And this valuation, again, of a private company, puts them at the same size as or similar size to T-Mobile or Nike. That is nuts. So they are planning to raise uh, between 500 to 750 uh, million. Uh, with the individual share prices hovering about uh, $95 um, and flexibility of the tender offer terms and size depends on the interest from both insider sellers and potential buyers. So let's see, do we get any clues of SpaceX's valuation? I found this, I don't even know if this is an article, this is something um, that has quite some interesting inside details uh, from SpaceX. As SpaceX is private, so I don't really have a way of verifying that, that this is correct, uh, but it seems to be correct. So uh, they th this was written uh, when SpaceX's valuation was uh, $150 billion. And you can see that they give a revenue chart of how much income they're bringing in. Uh, per year, you can see 2020, 2021, 2022, and in 2023. And what's interesting is the $6 billion revenue to $150 billion valuation gives you a price to sales of about 25. Uh, and that's crazy high. That is crazy, crazy high. But again, I think that it's it can be justified because, because of Starling, they're going to have a very high uh, growth, but it's still nosebleed valuation for this company. So as for comparison, I just wanted to show you that Rocket Lab is currently at a 2.28 uh, billion market cap. And according to my latest estimation for 2023, they are going to have a 251 million revenue for this year. So if they had the same multiple as SpaceX, uh, the valuation of Rocket Lab would be $6.2 billion. So 3x from here. Now, I think that SpaceX's valuation is yeah, really nosebleed. And I kind of understand why investors are willing to give that valuation to SpaceX. But is it then fair that Rocket Lab, which is also a very expanding a uh, rocket company only has a price to sales of nine point something, okay? When they're just about to have their, uh, you know, Q1 is supposed to be 100% growth for them or close to 100% growth. 
and they're developing their next rocket. So they are also doing good. So I agree that maybe the 25 price to sales is a bit too much for Rocket Lab, but is nine a fair value? So now let's look at how other competitors are uh, valued. And first we start with United Launch uh, Alliance. And this company is, they don't really have a valuation for this company. We just know that the owners are trying to sell this company. And this article says that the valuation can be between 1.2 billion to 7.2 billion. That is a very big range. And they are profitable as when I, when I read this article. So, but I kind of feel like they are profitable because they have these cost plus contracts, but I'm not so qualified to speak about this. All I can say is that it feels like this company is the one being disrupted by all the other newcomers. So uh, we don't have a valuation and they are being disrupted. So I'm just going to not look at this company, but here's something very interesting. Uh, Blue Origins valuation. So the reason why Blue Origins valuation is very interesting is because they have not flown anything to orbit yet. They have done suborbital flights. They have a, a reusable rocket to suborbital flights, um, but have not launched anything to orbit. They have a very rich donor investor <laughs> in, in Jeff Bezos. Um, so maybe that gives some sense of, secu sense of security to investors, but their valuation is five to $10 billion. Okay. So a company that has very deep pockets, hasn't really made any profits and hasn't flown anything to orbit. Yes. They have had successful suborbital flights, five to 10 billion rocket lab, 2 billion. Does that make sense? Doesn't to me. Okay, so here's another competitor to uh, Rocket Lab, if my laptop would want to work, and that is Relativity Space. So what's interesting about this is Relativity Space is a pure launch provider, okay? And in April 2023, which is quite recent, they were valued at 4.2 billion, but blah, 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 blah. They are only a launch provider, okay? So to put, put this into some sort of a, a context, I know it's probably wrong to calculate this way, but Rocket Lab is 66% uh, space services at, in terms of revenue and only 33% rocket launch, okay? So you take the 2.2 billion valuation and you go times 0 0.33. So that means that only their rocket launch division is $726 million valued. I know this is probably it's an oversimplistic uh, way to look at this, but we can agree that if the space launch and the rocket launch together is 2.2 million, then the rocket launch section has to be less. And this company, Relativity, has flown one rocket, didn't make it to orbit. They are developing their second rocket and that's it. And they are valued at 4.2 billion, whereas Rocket Lab is valued to 700 million for that part of the business. So does Rocket Lab's valuation seem fair to you? Okay. Next one is Firefly. This is another launch provider. As far as I understand, they are also an end-to-end -end space transportation company. So that's just launch. That's a fancy way, a startup hyping way of saying we are a launch provider. And they were valued at, I had it here. Oh yeah, 1.5 billion pre-money valuation. So they raised 300 million. So their total valuation is 1.8. And again, this is a company that hasn't really, maybe they have had one test flight that, that went successful and they are valued at 1.5 billion. Rocket Lab, 700 million and 40 plus launches, 170 something satellites to orbit, a fully working space system division. So does Rocket Lab valuation make sense? Not, not to me, uh, but to bring everything down to the ground, I wanted to look at what was SpaceX's valuation. If we would go back in time when they have just launched the Falcon nine 
and I could not find it because that would be very comparable to, to Rocket Lab. I did find something, uh, and this is a valuation from when the Dragon first docked to the International Space Station. So at this time they had the Falcon 9, they were heavily working on the Fal Falcon 9 being reusable, or at least it was in their plans. And they had a space capsule that was docking with uh, the International Space Station. So this would put them to um, where Neutron is, is you know, flying regularly, but they, they don't have or didn't have a space systems division at that time. And they were valued at between 1.2 to 2.4 billion. And this is quite low valued uh, in my opinion. And I think that this has to do with that they were the real first space pioneers. And there was a lot of question mark if this would even work, if this company would ever make a profit. And they made it and that makes it possible for all the other companies that follow after to get much higher valuations. This is kind of like how Tesla was suffering with their valuation for a very, very long time. And then Rivian came along and they got like a $10 billion valuation and very quick. Now it's very late and I don't remember the numbers. This is like something that I thought of off, off the fly. But uh, so I, I believe that Rivian was at one time valued at $40 billion before they started delivering their first electric uh, pickup truck. And for Tesla to reach the same valuation, they had to like successfully come out with, with the Model 3 and they already had the Model S, they already had the Model X, so it's not fair. So Rivian was probably very overvalued and Tesla was very undervalued at the time and I think it's a similar case that all these other startups are very overvalued and SpaceX was very undervalued at this time. But the question is, does Rocket Lab valuation make any sense? I think we are grossly undervalued uh, today we were up something like uh, five or six percent, and I think that that's on the back of the SpaceX news, and it makes sense. I think that there should be logically a lot more to come, but nobody can predict the future. So, thank you so much for watching, and if you stayed this long, then you're really an OG viewer of this channel, and please make sure that you, or not make sure, but if you want, please check out the Patreon. I'm Right now, if you would join, you are just purely supporting the channel because there's nothing of value there. Uh, but very soon, I'm going to upload all my uh, you know, models or my theses of all the companies that I follow. And it's going to be quite valuable in the future. Uh, but there's nothing there yet. So if you enjoy the content and you feel value, I would really appreciate if you check out the Patreon and maybe join. But... It's not a must. So thank you if you do that. Otherwise, I'm very happy that you watch the videos and I will see in the I will see you in the next one. Ciao ciao.